Welcome to Destination Marriage, a podcast about successfully navigating the winding roads of marriage. Whether you're newlyweds, engaged, looking to get married, or have been married for years, we want to share with you how we have navigated those winding roads over the past 19 years in our marriage. Join us on this journey as we talk about real life experiences in a marriage and what we have learned along the way. We discuss love, travel, fitness, raising kids, friendships, and much more, all from the perspective of our lives together. Happiness, love, grace, passion are some of the things we all strive for in a marriage, and we invite you to take this journey with us. Welcome, Welcome to, to Destination, Destination Marriage. marriage. Welcome to episode 47 of Destination Marriage. I'm Jackie. And I'm Tommy. And we are thrilled to have you join us on this very special journey today. Indeed. So we are really excited about the episode today. This is our last episode before we head off to the Caribbean to celebrate our 20th anniversary. Yeah, 20 years. In fact, today is the last day of being married for only 19 years to you. Only 19. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, we can't talk enough about how excited we are about this. Like you hear 20th anniversary and you think, oh, that's my parents. Or like, that seems so like that just, it's a big number for marriage, but it really is. And I, it's, it's fantastic. Like it's yeah. so exciting to share this with our family and our friends. Like the 20th anniversary is we're proud of it, mm -hmm. you know, and for those that have reached that or in process of reaching that 20 year anniversary, you know, we, we salute you. Um, but we're going to talk about what it means to us, um, kind of looking back. So what we thought we'd do is we're going to split up, uh, this 20th anniversary special into two episodes mm -hmm. today being sort of a looking back. And then the next episode, after we get back from our vacation, we'll be looking forward what to expect for the next 20 years. What are we looking forward to? What are mm -hmm. we, what are our dreams? What are the things that we want to do? you know, halfway through or less than half, less than halfway through this, this marriage, right? Yeah. Let's hope that it's in the 60, it's 70 just, year range. It, it, this is just the beginning. It's just the first third. <laughs> We're still newlyweds. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could certainly talk about so many different topics around being married, um, but we thought we'd have some fun today. And also, you know, why not make it awkward? Let's do a long overdue sex expectations episode. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why not? 20 years of experience now with, uh, yeah. with this, right? So the, today's episode is Sex Expectations, 20 years in, what we've learned, and what we tell. Indeed. So first we'll talk about what each of us have learned. Then we'll talk about, man, over 20 years, what and who do you mm -hmm. tell as it retain, pertains to <laughs> your sex life with yeah. your partner, right? The interesting topic. I think we can go down a, a number of paths there. And I think that hopefully we've got some advice that, uh, you can, you can learn from us from, and, and maybe share in a, in a laugh or, you know, maybe take a few things of tips or tricks yeah. that, that we've learned along the way. And, uh, well, before we do that, yeah. I think we should kind of do a little bit of a, a, a dive into just kind of our, our big, maybe takeaways or highlights from being married for 20 years. I well, mean, it's all about this expectation. <laughs> I mean, clearly that's takeaway. not the only thing we've learned in 20 years. Come on now. No, you're right. I mean, we're very proud of the 20 years. I mean, there's, there's so many things like milestones and, and things that, um, you know, that when you look back, it's like, wow, mm -hmm. wow, we did all that. Right. I mean, and we still have so much to go, but you know, things like having kids, yeah, having kids, that's right. a huge milestone. And even after having kids, I almost feel like that's not even, you know, that's something that continues even after adulthood, you know, once they're even out of the house, which we're not there yet, you know, but I'm <laughs> just saying that's something that we're still obviously working through as far as parenting. Yeah, that's a whole new transition yeah. in life. Right? But, but buying our first house, you know, buying a first house, that was huge. Mm -hmm. Um also expanding our travel. You know, we finally made it to Europe. That was a huge thing that we yeah, wanted to do. Yeah, we talked about that for the longest time. Some yeah. people are like, oh yeah, I've been to, you know, they start listing off all the countries. Like, oh well, you know, until we went to Italy, yeah. we hadn't been to Europe before. No, we Neither, hadn't. None of us we, had, yeah. We traveled quite a bit, just hadn't made it to Europe. And it's more difficult, you know, when you have kids because obviously that's a longer trip. So you're either bringing your kids or you're committing someone else to stay with your kids for two for weeks. For a period of time, <laughs> right. Um, I mean, there's so many things just being married for 20 years, you, you know, looking back, we've learned so much about each other 
right? Mm -hmm. As we've gone into different phases of our lives. And I was having this conversation with Brandon, our oldest son earlier in the week, actually talking about, Hey, you're in a different stage of life. It's a different season than we are. Mm -hmm. We're in a different season. We're, you know, we're 42. We've, we have different responsibilities and we're, we're in a different place. Um, that's just the nature of being human, right? Right. You're going to go through different seasons, have different, uh, different, Experiences, experiences and, stra- and challenges, demands, from life. De- demands responsibilities, yeah. depending on that time of life. But, you know, we're we're in the season we're in. Right. Right. And what do you think, babe? Well, here's another milestone that I do want to share with everybody, because it's a milestone that we're kind of still working through right now. And it's purchasing a new mattress. And I just want to throw it out there. Okay, <laughs> Don't let your husband no, choose. <laughs> here's why, because even though we're talking about this expectations, uh, the mattress situation absolutely goes hand in hand with that. And yes, it is a milestone because the last time we bought a mattress, I was pregnant with our youngest. Wow, it's been a long time. And I just want to, I just have to with this mattress situation. Our mattress is literally trying to kill us. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I thought I did the right amount of reviews, but, uh, yeah, it's literally like trying to make our lives more miserable. It really is. (laughs) Not more miserable, just miserable. (laughs) And do you know that, I mean, just the lack of sleep or your sleep or lack thereof can affect your, your sex life. So, I mean, it's really kind of goes hand in hand with this, but I do want to say we were very excited about this. We had waited a long time, really wanted this mattress. We were due overdue. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we're in the what, battle of mattresses what she, right now. What she really wants to say is, my husband's an idiot. And the no, first question she I asked was, read reviews, did you even read the I'm, reviews? <laughs> it's important to read reviews. <laughs> because uh, one of your friends, uh, same situation, right? And one of yes. the reviews on the mattress that her husband bought said... If you value your life, don't <laughs> buy this mattress. Okay, so read reviews, I'm right take there the time. Them. Yeah. Because now we're in this situation with, with a new mattress. But we did get one of those mattresses out of a box, and we'll be able to return it it will will be returned it will be returned but it's a process it is to do the whole thing but anyways (laughs) men like (laughs) don't just order one when you even if you think you're right you're probably wrong well on that note so buying a buying a mattress is a milestone comparable to having kids okay i see where you're at (laughs) (laughs) i'm just saying it goes hand in hand with today's topic and it is a milestone and we waited like 14 years to buy a mattress (laughs) so but i think that we were, we were talking and we'll talk about it as it relates to, to sex in our marriage and in marriage in general, but just think about how much we have evolved as a couple and how much we've learned about each other. And I feel like just the last couple years, I've truly learned more about you. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's because I've been more intentional about learning about you or if I've maybe, maybe I knew some of those things, but it kind of all came together or I think a lot of it's, you know, reading other stuff, you know, other articles and listening to books and reading books and then saying, Oh wow, how does that, how does that apply to our marriage or to Jackie? And then asking questions and you, you know, you, Mm -hmm. you open up more. Right. Right. So that, I mean, it's, it's beautiful to me Mm -hmm. to learn more about you and there's, I can't wait to spend the next 20 years learning even more about you. I'm full of surprises. Jackie knew everything she needed to know about me. Like That's one year. True. That's, That's about true. it. That's all I got. That's not true. Well, I mean, what do you, what do you think about maybe talking about some of the things that we've specifically learned around the last 20 years in terms of having a healthy sex life as husband and wife? So sticking with this theme of my husband's an idiot. I'll start with, I have learned how to ensure that I don't get lucky on any given night. You're trying to ensure that? No, I've learned how to ensure that. Therefore, but learned, you don't. also learning <laughs> what, what not to do is my what point. What not to do, yeah. Right? <laughs> and I think probably on the top of that list is, um, hey, um, you know, we haven't had sex in three days. Or we only had sex twice this week some version of that, that, that just tends to not really turn you on. You're like, Oh, I feel like that's a really poor move for any husband to do. I would, I would highly advise anyone not to keep a calendar or a score. I I think, didn't we do a whole episode on that? We did. (laughs) We did talk about that before. Yeah. I I think that puts an added pressure and also takes, I don't know, really kills the mood. I have to agree with you on that one. Yeah. I've definitely learned that, that 
nothing's happening and you're mm-hmm. get, not getting any action, it's and, probably the best move to ensure that. And I've also learned that um, demanding it or, you know, being kind of passive aggressive about wanting to have sex, that doesn't Don't work real well either. It. That sounds aggressive. Well, you know, more passive aggressive, just kind of that like. You're not, you know, you're not getting meeting my needs. So I mean, now mm-hmm. that's a, that's a real statement, mm-hmm. right? That could be really important to really discuss mm-hmm. because there's meet, needs being met is, is a mutual, it's, it goes both ways, mm-hmm. but using it like passive aggressively or flat out aggressively, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't warm up the sheets. Mm, warming up the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. One of the things that I what feel the, like, yeah. What yeah, have you learned, in terms of like learning things over the last 20 years, obviously, um, you know, we've had some time, you know, I think a lot of times when you go into a, a new marriage and you're young and, you know, we were novices at best, um, we got married very young. So, you know, some of the misconceptions that I feel like I had were, you know, thinking, wow, 20 years down the line, do you, are you going to be passionate? Is there going to be any passion at all? You feel like mm-hmm. at that point it's, you've lost the spark. Because there's this whole idea of, oh, when you're newlyweds, it's hot and heavy and it's exciting and you just can't get enough of each other. And quite frankly, I think things are way better now. I mean, it's yeah no comparison. I would much rather have what we have now versus year one. Not to say that year one wasn't great and exciting, but because we know each other and there's almost like a secret language when you get to know your spouse mm-hmm. and that level of intimacy, there's just no comparison. So I've learned that, you know, that's definitely a misconception. And also it's important for me to put forth that effort, you know, to also initiate. I think there was maybe, um, I don't know, a falsehood or wherever that seed was planted at some point in time, maybe in young adulthood. Mm -hmm. I really thought that the husband was the person that was the aggressor, the person to initiate and kind of, you know, start that conversation or make that first move. That's really not the case. But that's something that I've learned because day one or going into the marriage, all we know is what was, we know. Yeah. Right? I mean, that what was just we've my been idea. Or conditioned to believe, um, heading into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm thankful that that has evolved. Yeah. <laughs> so win, win. <laughs> it is a win, win all around. It's a win, win, win. We, so, we, you, you benefit, I benefit, and then we benefit. What's that from the office? Win, win, win. It, right? sound, it might be. Yeah, it might be. Well, I, I think, I mean, we, we certainly have those, those things we're conditioned to, we all do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you bring that into, you, you bring that baggage with you. And some of that for some people might be different baggage. You know, we all have different baggage. Um, I think the idea that, oh, well, there's some sort of issue. We'll just get married. That'll, that'll solve the issue. Like mm, Mm -hmm. around sex, right. There's all, that's could go. I'm not a psychiatrist, but Mm -hmm. there's all sorts of things that that could lead to that aren't healthy. Um, but I am absolutely thankful that you um, have opened up. And then we've had some, a lot of discussions about it. And I've had to learn how not to communicate those types of mm-hmm. maybe things I see that I wish you would, you know, open up a little bit about. Mm-hmm. I've had to be careful how I message that. Yeah, I've learned how to communicate Because it gets be sounding like better. I'm whining or complaining. And that's something that we both have learned in terms of like, that's what I was saying earlier, as far as like that language between you and your spouse and, you know, in the bedroom or in when you're being intimate, you know, it's important for you to kind of understand how to communicate your needs and also Mm -hmm. be sensitive to how your spouse will receive it. So it's not something that's going to be, you know, basically kill the mood or do you know what I mean? Because then it can plant seeds of negativity and it can snowball from there. It's, you know, I, I, we, what we sort of tasked ourselves with doing is, Hey, Jackie, you write down some of the things you've learned around, around this topic. And I write some of the things I've learned. And we both wrote this part down around that connection, that mm -hmm. passion and how it is so much deeper now Mm -hmm. and how important that is in our sex life. Yeah. But there's also kind of like risks with that. And I wrote down a couple of things that like I've learned. What's that? That's still, you know, a work in progress to kind of master this craft but um (laughs) because we know each other so well it can also be easier to maybe criticize or or to make a comment that comes across as critical Mm -hmm. like what's wrong yeah which you know right in the middle of of uh you know knocking boots 
tends to not further than the night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it tends to, you know, it plants a seed that flowers and blooms really quickly and it's not healthy. Right. Because we know each other so well. It's not like we're getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still are, but I, I think, um, you know, being wor too worried about every single move, mm -hmm. you know, what it means. Oh, well, the hands a certain way or, you know, leg is a certain way. Therefore, she's mad at me or something. Uh, who knows? Or if you right? just don't feel like the person, um, if your spouse is maybe as receptive to um, your touch or maybe mm -hmm. their energy level or their mood in general just seems off. And then we take it personal. It may not have anything to do with this at all maybe other things that are going on and that has happened where there's a level of stress in our lives that mm -hmm. can obviously i mean it just kind of trickles down into everything else in life you know it, it affects your mood right so there have been times where i think then we may communicate an insecurity or concern yeah. mm -hmm. because the other person is stressed out about things that have nothing to do with that moment but has to do with work or the house or life <laughs> right and maybe someone New, newer in a marriage, they may not know that about their spouse yet, that that's mm -hmm. the way they react to certain things. So there's, there's that risk of be overthinking it, but the, the flip side of that, and it's also a, a, a great reward of the passion and the knowledge we have of each other is that both of us, I think, recognize when, when we're feeling a certain way and therefore like acting a certain way in bed, we can also, you know, counter that with something that will change that mood positively and mm -hmm. maybe you know maybe a, a different touch or a different you know position whatever it is that a high then, five uh, uh, yeah lots of high <laughs> fives lots of high fives good gosh a little smacks but no but you know what I mean like you can also because we know each other so well you know that like oh Tommy's feeling a certain way I'm just going to do this instead and then yeah guess what mood changes mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah so communication is really important sometimes nonverbal, but just you and know knowing each other's bodies and the way that what we like and dislike right. is important that's huge I mean that's for every every couple like every husband and wife you're going to get to learn and understand those things especially not only that but also when you're when you're like you said we're going through seasons right in mm -hmm. life um those seasons throughout your life throughout your marriage may also change the times and seasons of your spouse in terms of what their needs are and mm -hmm. their emotions and how you need to support them and make them feel comfortable, whatever that may and look how like you should may approach, vary may change. And how you should approach intimacy. Right. Sometimes it's sometimes it's hot and heavy, sometimes it's just really slow and passionate. Yeah. Right? Here's the other thing I've learned is I vote for hot and heavy relax, all the time, but <laughs> relax <laughs> and learn to laugh at yourself when things just don't go like as planned that, or what you visualize in your mind. Like, and not let's to, be real. And you know, it's a great point. And I, I've thought about this as we're at times when these are, these events are happening that are yeah. embarrassing or silly or not embarrassing, but 20 years ago, 18 years ago, uh -huh. it would have been like mortifying. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like in the beginning, you're overthinking those things and you're worried about what your spouse thinks and like you nights make over sure, like nights over mortified yeah like you shut down <laughs> right now it's just kind of like we'll laugh about it you know we'll mm -hmm. just and I, we don't need to go through examples no, i think you guys could not. To but gather I mean, but i'm pretty sure everyone has had a moment where they have had to laugh or you just have to just relax and just go with it because yeah we do tend to ha maybe have an image in our mind of how the night will go <laughs> and every now and then or once in a blue moon something may go awry and it mm -hmm. doesn't really, you know, pan out the way you My planned cramping. or whatever. I'm just saying like, you My know, knee hurts. <laughs> <laughs> those are, those are the nice rated G ones, right? Where before that's, that's, that's all we need. That's before, all we need. I'm, like, I'm just going to tough it out and not tell her my, my foot's cramping up <laughs> and I can't feel anything. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but no, I think, you know, and it's not, it's not just like, let it all hang out and who cares about any of that? Because that's another one we both wrote down is mm -hmm. the, that, it, you know, it's not about like letting go. It's more about just, Hey, things happen. We're human mm -hmm. and just enjoy that moment, you know, right. Enjoy the moment and you'll laugh about it later. If yeah, you don't laugh about it right then and there. Relax and just kind of go with the flow and yeah. And you have to laugh at yourself. You can't, right. we were, I was very serious and in my own head, you know, 20 years ago, but mm -hmm. yeah, now, and especially because there's also a level of trust that you build with your spouse. That's a good okay? point. That's a really good point. Yeah. You build a level of trust. I mean, obviously, being vulnerable, 
Right. Accidentally and, vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a difference between being a newlywed, okay, versus 20 years in. And yes, having that level of trust and that level of comfort isn't what you're saying as far as letting it all hang out, but it makes things that much more deeper and passionate because you are so close and you do understand the other person. So, you know, you're not like... Of course, I'm sure there's still things we're learning about each other, but we are sensitive to each other's needs, and especially because we've learned also how to communicate that better. I agree. Yeah. So, you know, but regarding the not letting it all hang out, I think I'm really appreciative of the fact that, and, and obviously you caring for your health and your physical, um, you know, exercise and your, your strength and all of those things. It's not only for our in the bedroom, but it's uh, you. I'm appreciative of you for your effort at, you know, maintaining, you know, a, a, a physical appearance that's really, really, really attractive and trying and doing that kind of intentionally and telling me that, you know, it's, it makes me feel mm-hmm. uh, makes me feel loved. It makes me feel uh, really connected to you that you do that. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you. I think it's important for, I mean, you do the same. You take care of yourself. You take care of your fitness. Like you put forth that effort. I think it's important for us to do that or husbands and wives to do that for each other. Um, because obviously that's part of the keeping the spark alive, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I appreciate the fact that you take notice and, and appreciate that as well. Cause I'm sure that there, you know, if I were putting forth a lot of effort and it wasn't recognized, um, and you didn't say anything, um, it probably would make me feel a little unappreciated or maybe defeated as far as like, why am I putting forth that effort if you're my husband? Yeah, and it's, it's not only for, for that, but I mean, there's a lot of reasons, self help, you know, self, self worth and just your overall health. But yeah, I mean, that's obviously everybody wants to take care of their health yeah, and but, you feel good when you're taking care of your, your physical appearance and your body. But that obviously is a piece of it. You know, I'm for Tommy's eyes only. So like I want obviously to be pleasing to your eyes so Hmm. when you're like you are (laughs) i like what i see (laughs) (laughs) but you know so a couple of the things that i've i've learned uh about over the last 20 years um one is that it is better much better when i put efforts kind of throughout any given day whether i was traveling and you know we would be flirting back and forth throughout the day about you know when i get home or even when we're working together, Mm -hmm. you know, or we're here, you know, working remotely, we still do that flirting, Mm -hmm. you know, throughout the day and kind of build up some anticipation. It's, it's a much, it tends to be a much better night, right? Sometimes spontaneous is great. Yeah. But there, you know, I think it's important to flirt. Yeah. And yeah, there's, that's a huge piece of it, like a hug or a kiss throughout the day. And even if let's say we weren't working under the same roof Mm -hmm. right now, but yeah, if we were working in different offices or you were traveling, just flirting and keeping that communication going and flirting in your language too. Not like what I want, but what, what what makes, (laughs) what makes you excited. (laughs) Like if I was just like flirting with you, like I'm going to do X, Y, and Z and I'm going to get the X, Y, and Z. You'd be like, Oh, are you now? Yeah. With who? (laughs) And you know, the other thing I've learned, um, is that? that, and this is again, a win, win, win sex is much better when I focus on meeting your needs instead of focusing on meeting my needs during the act. I think that's something across the board. If men do that for their wives, that's going to be obviously a win for the wife and also for this, for the husband, because it should be, you should be selfless, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, and I think that that translates well into the bedroom if, if they're, if husbands are doing the very same thing. So I agree with you. Yes. But and I that's also- been something that, you know, I think every man would probably agree. It's, it's, it, it takes effort and focused intentional effort to do that because there's just certain things that are like, you know, just, you guys all know what I'm saying. Like you just focus on what you like and what feels good to you only and whatever pace or speed or position or whatever you want. Like those are all things that, if you're not intentional about meeting your, you know, your spouse's needs, it's gonna, it's gonna. You need to scale be a back. Detriment. We're talking about paces and stop. We're like, <laughs> uh, hey, that is that is that's rated PG thirteen. It's not even rated R. It's a sex expectations episode. <laughs> 
20 years of learning about my spouse. You're killing me over here. Oh my gosh. Hey, come on. We're talking about things that, you know, guys, you need to think about that stuff, right? You need to think about meeting your wife's needs and what makes her feel good. And then what happens more often than not mm-hmm. is it makes the whole night better right. for both people. I don't disagree with you. Absolutely. So that's PG-13. There is nothing you can insinuate all you want. There's I'm nothing just... rated R about that conversation. <laughs> well, here's another tip, okay? <laughs> this mm-hmm. is, I mean, it's a real, it's it's a thing that I've learned, okay. okay? Maybe you've learned it as well. I don't know, but I've learned this. Am I about? Am I being set up here for something? No, oh. not at all. I mean... I see that smile on your face. I, I think, don't know think if anybody coming. else thinks about this, but <laughs> okay. So, you know, you go out on a date night or you go to a party mm-hmm. or you go to a wedding or you're going to a dinner for work, you know, and you think, you know, it's kind of like a date night, regardless of what that setting is. And I think there's an added pressure of, you know, at the end of the night, you know, wanting to, you know, get frisky in the sack. Mm-hmm. Here's my tip. And this is what we have learned over the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, do the deed before you go out on the date night right. or to the event, right? Because then there's no pressure of after the evening and no when one knows like when tired. you walk in and you're like, yeah, that's right. Well, you know, but I'm just saying, well, now they do, but I'm just saying, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> but here's, but sorry here's guys. The, so the next, the next family or friend event we oh go to, gosh. that's what happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> do you want to be married another 20 years? I'm mortified. Over I, I cut you up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm just saying it just relieves that pressure, that mental pressure of like, oh, you know, I want to make sure that I meet my spouse's needs when it's midnight or one o'clock, you're rolling in at the end All of you want to do is go or, to bed. Oh, well, you're tired. <laughs> I mean, let's think about it. When it's a big event, right? If you were to go to a party, a birthday party, and you're drinking at the birthday party, you're going to a wedding, you're dancing all night, you know, even if you go for a really long date night and you're rolling in at 11 o'clock, 12 midnight, mm-hmm. and we try not to go to bed that late that's kind of a hard time to say oh you know let's Mm -hmm. go for a romp in the hay i i completely agree yeah so do you think that that's evolved because we kind of figured that out about each other or that that's something that we've learned i think or do you think it's more of like a necessity because we get we have less energy at 12 o'clock at night like we used to (laughs) <laughs> well, both. I mean, we've learned, yeah. we've learned both, but I, I think that even if you're, even if you're younger, I still think it's a good idea to do that. I mean, even if in, you're in your newlywed years, mm-hmm. you know, because I don't know, I just think that it kind of tees the night up for success anyways. You know what I mean? Like there's no pressure of, will it be what I want it to be later on? Because I might be tired. You're already saying, yeah, it was fantastic. Now let's enjoy the rest of the night. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, just an added tip. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if anyone else Start thinks about Start with the dessert this, before the main course, but, right? You know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Isn't that a thing that they say that, like eat dessert? I. It was a, it was a Shaquille O'Neal quote. Oh, is that what it yeah, was? Yeah, because he talked about how he was growing up, he was so poor that they never could afford uh, dessert whenever they went out to eat. So mm. he made it a point to have, dessert he, first. to have dessert first. Right. He's doing okay. He's doing fine now. But yes, yeah, so in this case, the dessert. your bedroom dessert have before you go out on your date night or to whatever event. Yep. And then yeah. you can have dessert afterwards and it's great. Real dessert. Yes. That's a win win for Tommy. <laughs> win, win, win. <laughs> <laughs> Two desserts. So we are communicating and telling you guys mm-hmm. a lot. And because a lot of our friends and family listen to our podcast, we are now sharing with our friends and family a lot more probably than we would on average share. So let's talk a little bit about kind of our philosophy and kind of some of the risks Mm -hmm. and, you know, benefits as well about what and how much you share with your friends and family about your sex life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think in general, um, we do tend to keep our sex life pretty private. This which is, I think is wise. Which, this is pretty open for us, but we're not having it in front of one-on-one conversations or two-on-two conversations where there's another human that's reacting to our comment, right? So it's a little different sharing it on this type of mm-hmm. platform. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, in terms of having those conversations, at least as a woman and mm-hmm. as a wife, for me... Um, or even for other, I would say, 
close knit and um, very small circle of individuals that I would share with, it would only be um, to share something that if it were um, a concern. Like I think on one of the podcast episodes I had with uh, Chelsea, we were talking about you know the effects of you know changes in terms of your hormones and how that can also affect your intimacy. Like those conversations, I think are fine. Obviously, that's a close friend in my inner circle. Mm -hmm. Now talking about details of your spouse or criticizing your spouse or going, there are dangerous paths that you can really go down that I would never recommend and that we would never do. Um, but I think that, yeah, there's, there's certain safe conversations that you can talk to yeah. your friends or family members. If there's a major concern or something you're trying to work through in a safe place and only individuals that are really a hundred percent in your corner. Yeah. Those are the key component. Like we, we kind of broke it down into, sort of tiers of, of that kind of some version of that conversation. So you just kind of reference like a, a trusted friend yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. Right. That's, um, I think wise, but again, it has to be someone who's looks out, who's best, who's, who has our marriage in their best interest. There's no malicious intent or something that they could use. Yeah. And, and then, you know, as a, as a weapon or, as gossip or anything or as a right? seed to as plant, seed, yeah. um, you know, any type of negativity or, you know, try to plant any seed in your own mind mm -hmm. that could potentially cause a division between you and your spouse. A hundred percent. Like, yeah, I think that's first and foremost, you need to make sure, you know, who, the, who the person is who that the person you're, is you're, on the opposite end letting of the table. speak into your life and right. you're also planting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Giving away information or show, giving information. But so then there's like, Another tier is sort of that trusted, maybe couple friend that you mm -hmm. have. We've had, you know, a lot of conversations that are not super deep and yeah. like detailed, but just kind of, but we have very close couple general, friends right, that right. are, and so we'll have conversations about sex, but not, well, last night, no, you know, this no, no, happened, no. right? Yeah, I mean, that. and so I, but again, it's trusted couples because when you have mixed, mixed company, mm -hmm. There is a risk. It just is built into life, males, females, right? right? Like you have conversations of a sexual nature to the opposite sex mm -hmm. and it's, there's risk there. Yeah. You don't want to open up a door, mm -hmm. not even, not even crack open the window. You no, know? not at there all. There are dangers there. Right. But I think that, uh, that tier, again, it's around the trusted couple too. Mm -hmm. Right. And then sometimes that branches off into one-on-one -on -one conversations that are, you know, supportive, you know, like you said. Mm -hmm. example of hormones affecting you know if you never had that conversation with 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 her like mm -hmm. you might not have really thought about it in that level and right. learned right yeah. and so it's it's a healthy healthy i think one tier that we both actively avoid is that that kind of mm -hmm. group of friends where kind of sex is casually tossed about you yeah, know like the locker room talk like the locker room talk yeah, yeah. and Which luckily i feel like you Guys probably, like, I'm sure in college, right? I mean, there's probably more, like, literal locker room talk. Yeah, um, there literally was locker room I talk, don't like, really think when I was in college in yeah, the locker room. You yeah. were in locker room, you played sports. I'm sure there's a lot of that chatter going around. I don't think women have, and I could be wrong, I just don't have, I don't have a lot of girlfriends that, I guess, have those types of conversations. Little bits of chatter here and there, obviously around that subject, I'm sure, especially in my 20s. Right. But no, I'm sure not to the extent of what you heard in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, I, there was a bunch of 18 to 21-year-old yeah. guys. It was locker room talk, period. Right. But luckily, you know, I think part of it's because we've I've tended to have like-minded friends is mm -hmm. the, guy, the group of guy friends that I've had over the years. Uh, that's never been any either of ours like n none of us talk about like that kind of stuff yeah that's true we, we, and part of it's of because have... the people we choose and i think part of it's because a lot of times we all know each other too mm -hmm. and so there's just a, a, a level of respect that we're not going to discuss that nobody's yeah. asked me so tell me about you yeah. know what is jackie like you know right. nobody's ever asked inappropriate me that. well i wouldn't answer it but so again but be really careful there yeah guys ladies you know if that's the environment you're in and you're talking about your spouse and your sex life mm -hmm. in that group, that's way too much risk. There's yeah. too much, there's no, there's no upside other than looking good in that moment. Uh, it's all that it's mostly, if not all downside, there's, yeah. there's no, there's no benefit gained it's also disrespectful for your marriage. Yeah. It's very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Um, and certainly not with a couple that we don't know well. Yeah, absolutely not. Right, or a group of couples, and maybe we know one or two of them really well. I, that's just not a place where we ever go down. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
you know, half joking if there was, if we're asked a question, cause we don't want to be rude around, well, we don't discuss that. No, but like, I mean, joking is one thing, but I think what we're talking about more along the lines of the details that, you know, could obviously breach the trust between you and your spouse mm-hmm. and also put them at risk. Um, I think also more, more so if you were to, as my husband, um, speak about me in such a way like I think that would put me at risk more it would be more disrespectful uh, that's to a me. fair point right um just because and that's just obviously also a lot of the roles that we play in our household I feel like as the husband and the protector mm-hmm. I think that would be kind of like throwing me to the wolves a little bit you know yeah or I mean for it's, any husband it's not to do protecting that, just, your wife yeah and then and the vice versa is true there are a lot of women that have a lot of bad intentions oh I don't doubt that right yeah. and so you throw this you throw something out that's a that's a compliment to me. Mm-hmm. And now you've planted a seed with a woman who, who mm-hmm. doesn't have our marriage in her best interest. She right. has self-interest or mm-hmm. sometimes God forbid someone that likes to destroy marriages and break mm-hmm. up marriages. Like why give anybody that seed? Right. Why plant that seed? Anyway? And I've seen that happen, right. not with us, but I've seen that happen mm-hmm. with other people. I've seen that ha- play out and yeah, it's, 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 it's dangerous. Right. Um, so last tier, What's that? Let's talk about what do you tell your family? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, I do around. like to joke. We joke. Yeah. I love, I love, I love Lucy. I'm sure you're listening to this. With, I love you. You're my Actually, mother-in-law. I was going to tell her to skip this episode. No, she needs to listen. I like getting a rise out of her by flirting with you in our kitchen or wherever. Right. But it's all in good fun. And she knows it too, but she gets like, <gasps> you know, yeah. but secretly she loves that. I love you. She knows that I love you. Yeah. But I do joke around some of the family and with your sister, you know, like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say something. now she just kind of rolls her eyes and it's like, yeah, it's the way you should be. Right. right. But it's fun. It's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. Nothing inappropriate. Just joking around. Um, but I think that if it, if anybody were to ask a family member, um, just because of how we are not giving details around that, but just. Mm-hmm. They would know that we're passionate about one another. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm sure there's people that probably have conversation with a parent or with a sibling, um, you know, maybe even earlier on in the marriage, maybe not 20 years in, but you know, if you're a newlywed and there are things that maybe, I don't know, I mean, if the boys were to come to you when they're newlyweds and they were to have a concern, not talking about their wife, but them in general as a husband and a man, in that sense, if they had questions, that wouldn't be inappropriate as their father to if there was something that they just needed answers on. I don't know. Uh, I agree. The, the same were to go, I guess if, you know, like I said, we were novices. So if I had asked a question to my mom in my early twenties, which I would not have. Um, but let's say I did. Um, I know that the advice would be given with the best intentions. You know what I mean? They wouldn't mm-hmm. guide me down the wrong path kind of thing. Yeah. I think there's, there's, a few things. It's similar to the friends. It's about mm-hmm. trusted, right? And just because someone is a, a close relative doesn't give them carte blanche, you know, mm-hmm. uh, access to your sex life. No. Right. To discuss discussing of the sex life and an expectation of, Absolutely well, not. you need to tell me what's going on right. or because a lot of times, you know, there's scenarios where there's dynamics in families where if let's say that, uh, could be any different direction right but if you went to uh complain about me to one of your to a sister Mm -hmm. right now i know that christine wouldn't you know be negative but Mm -hmm. it's it's a really slippery slope about disrespecting your husband or disrespecting your wife right by having conversations with a with a spouse or with a family member Mm -hmm. that's close right because you're going to be around those people the rest of your lives. Yeah, I think that could be really awkward. Right. And that's what, and, and I wasn't really saying along the lines of complaining. I'm just saying early on in a marriage, let's say for example. Well, oftentimes it could be complaining if you feel like you need yeah. to vent about something, right? I mean, there's risk there. You got to be really careful. Yeah. I don't disagree. Um, but I think for the most part, when it comes to you and I, we really don't. It's more mm-hmm. along the lines of joking. Like you like to get a rise out of my mom. But right. um, other than that, it's. There's, there's no detailed conversations taking place and it shouldn't. I mean, that's not what we're comfortable with. I guess it depends on yeah. what someone else is comfortable with, but. And, and especially because I think, I think one, like one scenario that's like, uh, almost a, a hard no, of, a, I that? can't think of a, a, maybe I could make up a reason why it would be, uh, kind of okay to do in times, but like hmm. husbands, like don't go to your mom about sex with your wife. Like, just don't have that conversation. 
No. I think that is embarrassing to your wife. It puts her in a really awkward spot. And I, not that I do that. I wouldn't do that. I don't but think I'm saying, Sandy wants you to go <laughs> to her about hear it any anyways. of that. Oh my gosh. But let's face it. There's some, some boys dressed up as men that probably still are connected to their man children to the man. Yeah. Man child. You know what I mean? That, that lean on mommy for everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you are, that's a, that's a really dangerous, it's an immature, you know, now if your wife maybe asks or really respects the mother-in-law and there's a, there's a respect and a, and a love there that is okay for that environment, you Mm -hmm. know, and the wife's okay with it or something that's different. But like, man, if, you know, if the mother-in-law is kind of evil, not evil, but, you know, doesn't have the best interest of the marriage, maybe just, you know, has the best interest of her son at heart. Yeah. Like, could use that as a weapon. Yeah. I mean, best interest also applies to, like we were talking about with, with friends, but it still applies with family as well. Yeah, because, it doesn't mean you know, that every family member, mm-hmm. I, I know that's unfortunate, but it doesn't mean that every family member would have the best interest at heart when offering up any advice you know so i think you still need to be careful but i really feel confident that sandy does not want to hear that conversation from you oh no my mom would stop me (laughs) mid-sentence nope don't don't want to know yeah i don't think she wants to hear that and and any direction of that right if if the spouse goes to to their parent one of the two parents right Mm -hmm. and has a conversation and the other and the other spouse finds out about it they could be really embarrassed it could just create a dynamic that's not healthy um, cause it is intimacy and sex is a mm-hmm. really, you know, it's, it shouldn't be, it should absolutely be discussed with your children and in, in mm-hmm. a proper, you know, light, but it's a, t- it's a sensitive topic, right? Yeah. It's not one you just throw out there right. because it really has, I mean, it's about, it's literally becoming one, mm-hmm. right? There's nothing closer than that. Okay. So I think we have, uh, expressed our opinions mm-hmm. on, um, kind of what we tell and why, um, I hope you guys, yeah, I would love to hear if you disagree, you know, we're open to, it's a great discussion, I think, because maybe some people don't realize yeah. how much they're telling inappropriately to other people right. around their spouse. And it's embarrassing. It, 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 can, it be. can be, right? <laughs> you don't, you just don't want that in your life. It's, it's, there's enough stresses yeah. adding, adding one like that. It's just silly. This was a huge stretch stretch for me today. I I will say I'm going to, I have to like, you know, I want to throw it out there. Like this was definitely me being vulnerable with a topic like this, because again, you know, I don't really share, you Mm -hmm. know, when it comes to this topic, we just don't. But I think we've made it, like you said, we've made our point, we've, we've, (laughs) made our point clear as far as our thoughts, as far as what we do share. Um, but we're really excited about getting ready to leave for the Caribbean and we're going to celebrate our 20th. Mm. And like we said, this is a two parter. So the next episode, we're going to talk about kind of what's next, you know, what's next for us. And we're looking ahead over the next 20 yeah. years, like, you know, and wow, where do we go? Exactly. And you know what, honestly, every time we travel, we always have those conversations. So it's yeah, going to be do. even better. I'm sure we're going to have a lot to share with you guys. So that'll we, be exciting. We have some Mai Tais at the beach and dream about the next 20 years. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. Well, thank you guys for listening so much. We hope that, uh, this topic, um, was, was helpful. Um, you know, we're, I mean, tw- sex in, in your marriage is a big component but it's not all of it right i mean it's Mm -hmm. it's a it ties into a lot uh but man there's so much more about you and about our marriage that i'm excited about and so thankful for the last 20 years me too baby all right well guys appreciate it so much tune in next week when we come back tan with some dreams and vision for the next 20 years that you guys hopefully and hopefully do mattress on the way oh she got me she had to throw that jab out there 20 years of this i've been listening bye guys bye guys we hope you enjoyed this episode and if so please continue to listen and subscribe on podbean apple podcast iHeartRadio, spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from We would greatly appreciate positive reviews and we will answer any questions at feedback at destinationmarriagepodcast.com. For up-to-date content and news about the podcast, you can follow us on Instagram at destination underscore marriage and visit our website at destinationmarriagepodcast.com. Be sure to tune in next week.